Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Uh, hey, Lou. Uh, yeah, I'm calling you on the phone. Yes, sorry. Okay, all right. Uh, I can't come in to shoot Men Are So Smart today. Uh, who is this? It's Lou. Oh, 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 yeah. oh. Who did you think it was? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I can't come in today. I'm okay. dead. Hmm. I'm calling in dead. You know what? Can you just come in for a couple hours? Just a couple hours? Yeah, I need you. kind of need you. Well, I'm kind of dead. If we could just get a couple shows in. All right. Well, you know what? I got an idea for a show, Ronnie. Weekend at Bernie's? No. No. Rules for how to call in sick to work and when. All You're right? the expert. All right. We'll do that next on Men Are So Smart. Why am I still holding the phone? I don't know. You put yours down. <laughs> Are you feeling feverish, but have a looming deadline? Here are some questions to ask yourself about whether to call in sick or not, and how to do it. You know what, we've done the work for you, because we're givers, <laughs> so we know. The research, it's all right here. You got it. Yeah. And first of all, the first category is, you gotta ask yourself, are you contagious? Yep. It's so important. Yeah. You got a tight deadline. You're having to stay home in bed. That's the last thing you think you need right now. Although you may want to be in the office, your coworkers may feel differently about having you there. Renee Ware, Director of Human Resources and Team Culture at Sonwill Distribution Center in Buffalo, New York, says that from a pure productivity standpoint, if you're contagious, calling in sick is the way to go. Who knows how many more employees will be faced with missing time from work as a result of the coworker who refuses to admit that they're contagious. For those working with customers, the need to stay at home becomes even more pressing. Or does it? For those working with customers, <laughs> the need to stay at home becomes even more pressing. Uh, so when are you contagious? Some warning signs include, write these down. No, I'm serious, write this down. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. Nausea or diarrhea. He spelled. He spelled. That's you. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about writing it down. <laughs> oh, good. No, write it down. Oh. So when are you contagious? Excessive mucus production. I used to work at a place that handled that. Excessive mucus production. We shipped it to and from the East Coast. Uh, red and crusty eyes. Oh, dang. Or achy joints and fever. If you have any of those symptoms, you should not be at work. If your temperature is over 100.5, you should not be at work. Oh my God. Next up. 105, you're probably blowing no, your brain. 100.5. Oh, really. okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so next up, can you do your job? Uh, some people, they, they go in so sick that, and they, they can't do their job. Why even go? Even if you don't meet all the warning signs of being contagious, sometimes you feel just bad enough you're not really able to perform your job well. When you're sick, quality and attention to detail often suffers and productivity declines. These effects are magnified if you work in an industry that requires concentration, the operation of heavy machinery, or interaction with picky clients, especially that last one. Mm -hmm. uh, if the sick employee hasn't slept well, is groggy or taking medication, that induces drowsiness, the safety of that employee and others is now at risk. Uh, by taking the sick day, you're allowing your body time to recover, which will help you get back to health and productivity faster. You know, I had to start a new medication this last week and um, I took it Monday night and I woke up Tuesday morning vomiting. Ooh. Yikes. And I proceeded to vomit all day on oh, Tuesday. Wow. Um, if you're throwing up and, and you seriously, you fear even leaving the toilet, Boy. probably best you don't go into work. And yeah. so I, I didn't. Um, my boss was semi-understanding, but uh, at the same time, there was no way I could have done my job. Right. Seriously, I would have been running to the bathroom about every... 15 minutes. All right, next up. What about a mental health day, Ronnie? You ever take those? No. Some days you feel totally fine physically, but you just need a day off from the stress of work or a demanding boss. 
Can you take a mental health day for this type of recovery day, save the sick time, and take a planned vacation day instead? As Ware notes, your stressful workload or terrible boss just got more stressful and more terrible because now your work is piling up and your boss thinks you can't handle it and that you're unreliable. That's not to say don't take days off for your own emotional well-being, but schedule it in advance and actually enjoy it. On the other hand, if you need him for a mental health day is more severe, say you've just received devastating personal news and are unable to concentrate or work or stop crying. Take that mental health day. And of course, if you need to take care of a sick relative or have legitimate mental health conditions, these are protected under the Family and Medical Leave Act and Americans with Disabilities Act and can warrant sick days from work. I know uh, we lost a dog. Uh, it's been a couple years ago. and You still uh, haven't gone back to work, have you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of milking that one, Ronnie. But you know what? I actually went to work that day because uh, sometimes it's good to not just sit at home and think about it. Yeah. All damn Take day. Take your long. mind off of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's how I that's how I rolled. Uh, this next one, are you really sick? Uh, here's the interesting thing about sick days. They seem to mostly happen on Fridays and Mondays. I hate when I have to do that. 100% true. Uh, very curious, isn't it? Well, usually when an employee calls in sick, the employee is on the honor system to be truthful about his or her illness. If you attempt to abuse the system, chances are your boss will know, and chances are he or she has heard all the calling in sick excuses. Uh, more often than not, we know when you're calling in and you're not being truthful. Your boss has been managing sick employees for years and he or she can spot a fake call a mile away. If your boss is on to you, you can expect a reprimand at best and losing your job at worst. Yeah. And I know at, uh, at the Sheriff's Department, at the county, they have an attendance log and it's broken down because we go by pay periods. So it's broken down into a, a two week stretch and if you're not there, they put a red line through the day. And if you're there, they put a black line through the day. So you can go through and you can spot trends very easily because all the Mondays, there's a row of Mondays here and a row of Mondays here and then a row of Fridays here and a row of Fridays here. So there's just rows of Fridays. And you look at all these people that call in sick. And because we work uh, like a flexible schedule, so your Monday may actually fall on a Wednesday. But people that are constantly taking their Monday off, even though it's not Monday, or constantly taking their Friday off, it becomes painfully evident uh, very quickly. And it would appear everyone can see that, too, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, to call in or not to call in. Now, you know when to call in sick, but what about how to call in sick? There's a lot of conflicting advice about whether a phone call is necessary when calling in, or if email is sufficient. If you are unsure, you can always look to your employee handbook or ask your boss up front what works best for him or her. If your handbook is silent and you never got around to asking your boss, what do you do? Well, they say in most situations, email is just fine. In fact, for many employers, email is preferable because they often check email before leaving the house in the morning and can get a head start on shifting schedules and resources to account for your absence. However, if you are ever in doubt about how to call in sick, a follow up with a phone call once the day starts, better safe than sorry. Yeah. Uh, and also you should never call in sick to someplace that you don't work. Yeah. I used to do that on the radio. <laughs> Which is why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> yeah. That was always funny. Yeah. Which department do you work in? Uh, I called, um, oh no, I better not even say that. I don't dare bring the mouse into this. <laughs> No, I don't need that, Ronnie. <laughs> Next up. Okay. Should you offer to work from home? Uh, which seems like a reasonable thing to do if it's possible, yeah, if possible. in your job. Uh, if you work in an industry that allows you to work from home, this can be a useful option, particularly if you're working from home uh, to care for a sick child, but you, need, but, but you yourself are feeling fine. If working from home isn't an option or you're out of paid sick days, Another option might be to offer to work a modified work schedule to make up for the sick day. For instance, by working a weekend shift or staying a few hours late the next few days. However, 
There are times when it's best just to let yourself rest and recover. Uh, use your judgment in deciding whether you can truly work at home or you would get better faster by staying in bed and sleeping it off. Today we're discussing ways to call in sick and uh, next up on our list, are you prepared? Sometimes you can feel an illness coming a mile away. I know what happens. My ears start to burn a little bit. They get kind of warm and I can feel the temperature coming on. Uh -huh. Sometimes it just sneaks up on you though. Either way, it's best to be prepared. Create a binder or folder of key tasks that need to get done in your absence along with clear instructions and tell your coworkers about it and where to find it. That way, even if you unexpectedly are out of commission, your team can still carry on without you, uh, without too much trouble. And um, just keep an eye on that. Know your body, know sense that something's coming up, maybe a sore throat or a cough uh, that's persistent or phlegmy. Um. It seems a little suspicious though, don't you think, if you, hey, here's my things to do list for the next person who looks, yeah. who, who comes into my cubicle. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you can be replaced. A little bit too much never preparation for this sick day. Okay. Yeah. I know, uh, I never... I think in my 30 years with the Sheriff's Department, I think I missed five days. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, and those were days, uh, one was the day after my mom passed away. And But, you know, in the Sheriff's Department, when you're answering calls for service, driving around in a car, uh, if your stomach isn't quite right, you don't want to be too far from a toilet. And so those days, you don't have any choice. Um, I, I really, because we typically work with uh, Ten percent of the population who are the biggest troublemakers. Yeah, if I got them sick, I didn't really care that much. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. If I, but if you've got the stomach flu or something like that, yeah, you can't go in. No. Um, you know, it's interesting when you're young, 21, and you have a job, 22. You know, you might call in sick on a Friday, so that you can go to a concert Friday night. Yeah. At this age. <laughs> If you call in sick, it's because you're sick. Yeah, yeah. There's not and, a lot of yeah. that for us anymore. Not going to baseball games or that sort of thing, or going fishing. Yeah. Um, I remember the day after my 21st birthday, I was, I, I was like unbelievably sick and hung over, and I tried to get the day off. I could not get the day off. Oh, my God. So I went into work. I was at work maybe 15 minutes, and I had to be there two hours before the store opened. We would restock shelves and what have you. Uh, this is Saving Center back in those days. Went in, two hours before the store opened, I'm stocking shelves, I had to run to the bathroom. <laughs> Just an absolute freaking projectile vomiting. Mm -hmm. Okay, go back out there. My, I was the assistant manager, the manager was there. And I'm sure I was as pale as you could possibly and be. And sweaty. Yes. And so, but I was a trooper and I'm going back at it, maybe 10 minutes more, ran back into the bathroom, threw up again, and he goes, I should have just given you the day off, just go home. Yeah. I'm like, oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah you should have. <laughs> it's, it's not necessary for two of us to be here on a Sunday morning. All right, that's gonna wrap up this episode of how to call in sick, when and why and how. Hope you learned something. If you did, give it a thumbs up, won't you? you know. And while we're asking for favors, Subscribe to our channel. Even click that bell right there for notifications each time a new show comes out. And if you enjoy it, please share it with some of your friends on social yeah. media. We would enjoy that. You'll find all of our links below. Also, feel free to comment and uh, we will reply to your comments. Uh, our email address are pretty simple. It's lou at mentorsosmart.com. And ronnie at uh, mentorsosmart.com. Got a little ahead of myself. I was going to say, don't forget our sponsors, too. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, we have some wonderful sponsors. So thank you so much for watching today, and we'll see you on the very next Men Are So Smart. Bye-bye.